Welcome back. You're on The Money with me, Liam Halligan. Now, every day on the show, we have an in-depth Money Talks interview with a business leader, a policymaker, or someone else with a very interesting perspective. Today, I'm delighted to welcome Luke Murphitt. Luke's the CEO of Integrity Cleaning, someone who, having received a serious medical diagnosis, left his high-flying job and formed his own company. What courage he showed. Luke, fabulous to meet you. I'm delighted you're in the studio with us. So tell us about that diagnosis, how you responded, and the company you set up. Thank you. It's great to be here. Uh, so, well, where do we start? I mean, you know, five years ago, um, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Uh, I didn't let that define me, but I was sent to the job centre three and a half years ago. I was in the job centre in Bromley, and uh, I said, I don't want uh, benefits. I want to start a company. And I said, I want to employ the people downstairs. And I looked at the buildings in Canet Wharf, and I said, I, can, I want to clean those buildings. They said, you sure? And I said, yes. And within nine months, I was cleaning seven towers for Gallaudet Homes. Wow, that's absolutely amazing. And tell us about Integrity Cleaning now. How many people do you employ? Um, where do you think the company can go? What's your vision? So what I did do was I started with helping mothers back to work. That was a premium thing. I really wanted to help as many people as I could. Um, and so since then, we've probably helped around 170 mothers back into work. OK. Yeah. Uh, last year alone, we did 30,000 hours of construction cleaning. Um, we've cleaned places like the Shard and like Amazon distribution centres and Tesco's and all sorts, brand new ones. Um, and it's, it's really great to help as many people as we can. What do you like most about business? It's obviously been psychologically hugely important for us. Yeah. You're a young man in the prime of your life. You've been hit, with all respect, with a pretty tough diagnosis. Mm. Surely your business helps you in so many ways as well as paying the bills and employing people. That's right. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, normally you're put into a box when you're diagnosed with a disability. I actually, uh, what slow, should slow me down and hold me back, I used to actually speed me up and propel me forwards. In the morning, it takes me 15 minutes to get from my bed to my bedroom door. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm frozen, I'm in a lot of pain, my fingers are cold and my teeth are stuck to my lips and so on. It takes me those uh, 15 minutes to actually unlock and get moving. Seven steps to my bedroom door, I feel like I've won a national award every day. <laughs> And then basically on the back of that, with those challenges, you can walk into the shard, ask for the business and you get it. It's really, it's really driven your self-belief, hasn't it? It has, that's right. I mean... What, uh, what, I mean, the moment you got the diagnosis, I'm sorry to pry, but it's so yeah. fascinating. You're clearly such a strong, resilient character. Mm. P please, please tell me if you feel I'm going, no. becoming too personal. But when you got that diagnosis, it, you must have felt crushed. How long was it until a, a switch flicked in your mind and you said, actually, I'm going to turn this to my advantage. I'm going to make this is going to turn me into a, a superman who's going to push forward and build a great company. It's funny to say superman. It's in my cufflinks. <laughs> He's got his superman cufflinks. Look at that. Uh, <laughs> we didn't plan that. <laughs> we didn't. Um, no, well, I was a hugely positive person. I always have been. Yeah. So probably uh, all that Parkinson's has done is levelled me up. But um, so it's a, it's a case of... Before, you said I was hugely crushed, I wasn't hugely crushed. Um, I was actually told it was likely that 99% chance that I didn't have Parkinson's. Then I stood in a thing with uh, all these professors and things and said, you do. Uh, I'm a Christian and I also believe in, this, you know, in, in, I have a faith that keeps me going every day as well. It keeps me motivated and gives me a purpose for a living. But uh, I said, look, I'm happy to take your uh, medication, I'm happy to do all that, but I also believe that also I can bring something back to other people. They said you're going to start taking life easy. Sure enough. <laughs> Some chance. Yeah, six weeks later, my company, which is a big bank in London, let me go when I was diagnosed with Parkinson's. So then I tried to defend it for myself, sent to job centre, and as I say, set up a company. Um, but where are we going with this? I mean, at the end of the day, we're one of the largest construction cleaning companies in London now. Good for you. We clean some of the largest uh, construction companies. How many people are on your books, Luke, if I may It ask. depends what projects are going, of course. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, we've just done an Amazon distribution centre. We've probably done about... 3,000 hours worth of cleaning, 160 shifts in the last two weeks. So, you know, we pay well above the minimum wage as well. I do believe in that. You know, there's no point paying some of the minimum because ultimately, to, to, get, to get good results, you really need people who, who respect themselves and feel respected. Um, and that means paying them a bit more than 8 91 an hour? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It should be considerably more. Someone can't survive on that. They're, they've got troubles all the time. They end up having to work through jobs all weekends and they can't perform for you. What I do is I pay my guys as well as we can within the profit margins. We get great service, great delivery, and our clients come back to us again and again. And let me ask you, Luke, how has, uh, a lot of people will be thinking, how has Brexit impacted you? How has yeah. the, the end of free movement of labour affected you? Mm. How has the, 
labour crunch in general affecting you and your business? It just presents a challenge. It's not a problem. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, if you're, if you're one of the best and you're going to be the best, you don't need to worry about, you know, obviously those challenges. We've got a queue of people who want to work for us all the time. Uh, and so we, we obviously can use that. But, uh, yeah, there has been a less of a flow of new people coming in from abroad. But uh, when they do, they come back to me. You know, they phone us up. I've got an MD who works for me. I'm a managing director, yeah. Yeah, that was my plan after three years, have an MD. So the company actually runs without me if it needs to. Um, but at the end of the day, obviously, uh, when I'm involved, it grows even further. You know, the first year, uh, let me see, second year, year before the pandemic, we grew 670%. Wow. During the pandemic, we, d we doubled our turnover, and wow. this year we're set to double again. So your message is if you pay people reasonably well, yeah. then you, there are people there to do the job. Well, of course. And the thing is, look, in the service industry, people have a choice when they clean. They can either clean like this, clean like this. And what Put some elbow grease into it. What motivates them to do that regularly and, you know, at a good pace? It's when they feel respected and feel like they're doing something for you and helping you, you know? They want to give something back. They know I've got challenges myself. They've got no excuses to be late to work. And, then, and uh, we, we, we give it our all. And the thing is, we've got to be p personable, you know? I don't work for money. I work trying to help people and help as many people as I can. Helping mothers back to work is a great lift. Fathers as well, obviously. Um, and, uh, you know, just people who need, who need a break in life. And I try and do the best I can and give what I can. I, I, I use the pain that I have and the challenges to hopefully relieve other people from theirs. Well, Luke Murphy, I must say, I've been in this business a long time. I've interviewed a lot of business leaders, but I don't think... I'll never forget this interview. You're an incredible man. That's very kind. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Luke Murphy there, who says business is boring. You're watching On The Money with me, Liam Halligan. I'll be bringing more of your daily dose of economic business and consumer news soon. Lots more to come in the next hour. Do stay with us. GB News, I'm Liam Halligan, and you're On The Money. Some men see things as they are and say why. I dream things that never were and say, why not? Before the gold, we had integrity clean. <laughs> Welcome back. You're on the money with me, Liam Halligan. Lots of you getting in touch as ever on GB Views at gbnews.uk. Now, I found that interview with Luke Murfitt, who has Parkinson's disease. He founded Integrity Cleaners. I found it really, really moving, and it's clear that many, many of you did too. Just one email that we've had, of the many that we've had on that incredible interview. Luke Murfitt is amazing, says Christopher. An amazing example to us all and obviously an incredibly genuine human being who tackles all his challenges head-on, including being on TV. If ever an award or medal is due, then it must be to him. Totally inspired by his story, says Christopher, as was I. I actually found talking to Luke extremely moving, and that's why I said, of all the business interviews I've done in my career, that will be one I never, ever forget. 